So um, today what I wanted to just talk about is a little bit, some of you have probably seen scuba diving or maybe been interested in scuba diving before, but maybe don't know a lot about it. How many of you are maybe interested in giving it a try? If you had an opportunity to try scuba diving, you would do it. Fabulous. I want to give all of you that opportunity to try it. Um, scuba diving, I am a terrible swimmer. When I was in high school, I joined the, squ the swim team. This is my first venue into the swim team. I came in last every single race that I entered, like dead waiting for a minute until I got to the, the time thing and, and stopped the timer. It was so embarrassing. I'm just, I'm a diver. I you know, do springboard diving. Um, and so I'm on the swim team with swimmers, but I do not swim. I like push from the bottom to get to the top and then climb out. So you do not need to be an awesome sewer, swimmer to be a scuba diver. Um, you do need to be comfortable in water. So you can't, I mean, if you're like super scared or claustrophobic or other things about, um, about water, then maybe it's not not a great thing for you. But if you're comfortable in water, <coughs> you feel pretty you know, um, uh, happy, satisfied with your um, swimming needs, you can go and play in the ocean or in a lake or something, you don't freak out, then that's probably pretty good. You're good enough for scuba diving. Because the secret is, once you get underwater, you can breathe. <laughs> so you know, it's not that big of a deal if you can't, you know, do a whole lot with your body, you just relax and breathe underwater, and it's, it's pretty awesome. There are places all over the world that you can do um, scuba diving, and yes, even here in Boston. Um, so I wanted to talk with you a little bit about what the sport entails, what you can do, and then um, uh, talk a little bit about maybe what we want to do as a scuba club and how you can get involved. So don't want to take too long. A lot of you, if you are interested in doing it, Maybe give me a reason why you're interested in doing it. What would be, yeah? There's so many cool exotic vacations where you can do this, and I feel like learning it before going on those vacations would be a good way to like, make the most of your time. There. Yeah, so you want to make the most of your time, just hop in the water and go, not waste your time learning yeah. to scuba. Yeah. And you can also take it. Or even like learning to do it before like going to something that's somewhere beautiful where I would have the opportunity to do it. Yeah, because you can take advantage of so many more opportunities while you're there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, any other reasons why people are interested in scuba? Go deeper than snorkeling. Go deeper than snorkeling. Okay, I'm also a crappy snorkeler, so if you've ever been snorkeling and didn't really like it, it's okay. Scuba is much better again. You can breathe underwater. You don't need to have the stupid <laughs> snorkel thing and water coming in and you have to... I've swallowed so much water, it's terrible. But. Um, I'm much better now. I was a terrible snorkeler for a long time, but it's it's not my favorite thing to do. Scuba is like a hundred thousand times better than snorkeling. Anything else? Any other reason? No, no, like tech junkies or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say just check out the you know go sightseeing. You know, well, yeah, <laughs> seventy percent of the Earth is covered in water, so you know you have all these places that you can go. Um, one of the things that when I was growing up. Um, I wanted to be an explorer, really. I remember I would go out into the woods and try to find a place where I couldn't see any sign of people. And I came back, I was talking with my mom, and I'd be like, I would get in trouble for this frequently. And so I was talking <laughs> with her and saying, you know, but I just want to explore somewhere, and everywhere has been explored. And she said, well, actually, you still have the space and oceans, space and the oceans. And so I did aerospace engineering at MIT, and I learned to scuba dive. And Scuba is much more accessible than space, <laughs> although we are getting better. Virgin's got to go a little faster and bring that price down. We may get there yet, but <laughs> the oceans you can and water you can just jump in right now. Anything else that's grabbing people? Just a curiosity. Nice to have. Say you've done it. Okay, fabulous. Good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what scuba diving is. So the, the basic thing, if you're thinking about getting scuba certified before you go on vacation so you can do things, you'll want to have your open water certification. So open water certification is you basically learn um, how to use your equipment, how to set it up. Uh, you go on some dives, you do four open water dives. And this open water can mean anything from a pond, a lake, an ocean, anything that's kind of open <coughs> water, right? And so at the end of your open water certification, you'll be able to go scuba diving wherever scuba diving is allowed. Right? So you can just pop in the water and do it. Um, it's much better if you go with an outfit. 
if you have a dive master who can lead you in places, a lot of these um, locations that you might go to on vacation um, will take you to certain spots, so it will come as a package deal, you'll get on a boat, they'll give you tanks, and, and kind of make it, depending on how, uh, how nice, how much money you want to spend, they can make it posh, or they can make it really bare bones. Um, but you, if you had your equipment and rented your tanks, you could put them in the back of your car, go to a, some water, and go scuba diving. So open water scuba diving is, is that. Now you have other certifications that come after that. So the next one that people usually do is the advanced open water scuba diving. And that one lets you go <coughs> deep. So the initial open water certification goes down to 30 feet, 18 meters, is that correct? Yeah. So 30 feet in a place like this. So if you look at some of these pictures, um, for example, this one, you can see this is the surface. So anything that has beautiful color, such as this, look at how shallow that person is diving through the river. Um, you can see a lot down to 18 meters or 30 feet. Um, a lot of the coral reefs are within this area. When you get down lower than that, um, what happens? Bends? Bends can happen uh, at 30 feet. So I'll talk a little bit about that one. It gets there. darker. It gets darker, right? The light doesn't diffuse down into it. So not only, um, there's a lot of the sea life needs to have photosynthesis. And a lot of these animals eat the things that do photosynthesis, right? So you have this whole food chain that's happening on the reefs at, you know, 30 feet. <coughs> and so that's a great place to certify, uh, to scuba dive. So if you are certified for open water, you'll be able to do a lot. Some other things that happen, though, with your advanced diving is sometimes they'll throw in, like, night diving um, or other specialty type of certifications. So night diving is a fantastic experience as well. So you get your open water. Some of them even do courses in night diving. So you can have um, some lessons, some lectures, and then also go on a um, chaperoned or supervised um, night diving expedition, and then you can have a certification towards this. Now, if you're doing certifications towards these things, if you go beyond open water, and get your um, advanced open water, your, your night diving, and you can even then go to rescue diving. So at this point you start to get into, you know, I'm serious scuba diver, I'm going pretty frequently, and I'm encountering situations where I probably would need to know a little bit more about safety. So if you're going scuba diving on your own um, with you know, other people taking on a little bit more challenging dives with wrecks or with other things. Um, the rescue diving is really something that, that you should be doing. So this talks a lot about emergencies, um, underwater emergencies, how you would handle that, um, saving people, uh, safety precautions, etc. cetera. So it's, um, it's a very physical course um, and it's um, pretty demanding, but it's also really interesting to kind of, if you have any fears about, you know, what would happen if, what would I do if, um, it helps you feel a lot more confident uh, in the water and scuba diving with other people, especially if you're taking out your loved ones or feeling responsible, organizing dives and things, this is a great uh, dive uh, certification for you to have. Once you have kind of the lay of that and a couple of tens of dives under your belt, then you go for something called the dive master. And the dive master is all about, you know, how you lead and organize groups. Um, so when you go open water diving um, in your places, on the boat will be a dive master. And that will be the person that leads you from place to place, identifies local flora and fauna, helps you get a great dive, and brings you back up in a location that you don't have to swim 200 you know, yards to get back to the boat or the shore or something like that. So um, this is a person who really makes the whole diving experience safe, fun and enjoyable for everybody. So after the dive master, um, a lot of people start professionally diving at that point. So you're being paid to be a dive master. So open water all the way up to that point is kind of doing your certifications and um, getting more dives and knowledge under your belt. And then dive master is when you start assisting instructors, getting a job, you know, leading dives, um, working in a shop, etc. Um, after dive master, most people go on to instructors, or some people go on to instructors. Dive master is actually a lot harder, I find, than instructor. 
And so um, you really put in all the effort. It's almost like an apprenticeship. And then when you do instructor, you're kind of just making sure that you know in depth all of the details that you need to, um, that you're able to also organize and administer a class, um, and that you're able to teach the things that you know well. Um, so as all of you know, you may know a topic, you may have done it a lot, but then when you actually go to describe it to somebody else, you're like, ah, I don't know. So the instructor class is really helping to, to solidify what you know and put it into practice. So I'm an instructor, have been through that. I did most of my dive master dives while I was in Zanzibar. It was pretty tough, I gotta tell you. Um, no, it wasn't, it was wonderful. And so if, if we want to do dive courses here uh, at Vecna, I can set those up. We can do our classwork here, and we can use the MIT pool through United Divers to um, do our practice dives, and then we do our open water dives somewhere here in the Boston area. So. In Charles? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not in the Charles. Um, but not much better probably for a lot of it. Um, some of it we could do in ponds that are around here. Um, you could even, if any of you have been to Walden Pond, you could scuba dive in Walden Pond and get your open water dive there. Um, or we can go out to the harbor or uh, Gloucester or some of these other places. So. Um, here are some of the, there's really exciting things happening in scuba diving right now. The technology is really booming, and so things are really progressing. You know, a couple of years ago, I got my first certification in uh, 1989, and, you know, things were pretty good back then, but um, the technology has gotten a lot better. Um, this is a, a BC, so this is a lot of the, uh, I'll, just go through, I'll just go through some of the equipment right here. This is um, a buoyancy control device, they used to call it BCD and now it's just a BC or there's a lot of different names that people use for them. So this is your, kind of like your life preserver here. So this is where kind of your integrator of all of your pieces, right? So you have hoses, you have your place where you put your tank on the back and um, helps you kind of just keep everything together. Again, they've kind of made these very streamlined and lightweight. Actually, Alberta, why don't you stand up and be my model? And right. so I can point some things out here, if you don't mind. Okay. One of the things about scuba diving, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of equipment intensive, you know? It's not one of those things. You feel really kind of clunky out of the water. It's, it's like a fish out of water. There you go, you've got it. So you've got a cummerbund band here, and you've got another thing there, so it is not coming off. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you turn around, here's where you put your tank on, and you strap it to that. Now, on the top of the tank, you'll have something called a regulator. And the regulator has a first stage. So your compressed air is in your tank, and you can have big tanks or little tanks, and lots of air or a little air, um, depending on what kind of dive you're doing. So this, I'm sorry, I don't have a tank. So this would sit on top of your tank right back here. And then um, your regulators would go over your right and your hoses come over your left. Now I have a couple of hoses you can turn back around. Super yeah, I like that, huh? Um, so this actually fits into your BC. So you have your second stage is coming in. And that, when you push on the button, inflates your BC, and when you push on this, it deflates your BC, right? You have a couple other places that deflate your BC back here and up here. So why would you have a uh, deflator back here? For someone else to do it? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Uh, I've done that as a dive master or instructor. I'm like, ah, <laughs> come back. Um, people shooting up to the surface is not a good thing. Why else? When you're scuba diving, you don't just have to move along one plane, right? Mm -hmm. You can move in all sorts of orientations and up and down and left and right. So sometimes you'll be scuba diving like this. And if you use this one to let your air out, what's going to happen? Water's just going to come right in. Air goes up. So mm -hmm. to let air out of your BC, you pull this one so it goes out mm -hmm. the top. So you have to remember what orientation you're in in order to let your air out. So that's another thing you have to kind of abandon your ideas of just this 2D and you get into a, a 3D type of space, which is great. Um, so that is a primary regulator. 
Um, that will go into my mouth when I do it. This is an awesome <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> um, this is great new swivel joints. It's so easy to use. It used to be, you know, you'd have to just suck air, suck air. You could have all these uh, nozzles to um, adjust the flow so it goes in nice and easy. In my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really does sound like it's Now this would be the one that your buddy would use. Um, so it's bright yellow. It goes in front of you like this in this triangle area. So that if I'm scuba diving with Alberto and something happens to me, I just grab this and start breathing. Does everyone carry a spare, or is that because you're an instructor or master? It's good to carry a spare. Just because it also might be that your primary regulator has something go wrong with it. So I've seen actually, you know, people, something happens, they get sand in the, in the regulator and it will free flow. And so when this is free flowing, you can breathe out of it when it's just bubbling, free flowing air out of it, but it's a lot more difficult. And so it's nice to have this to put in your mouth so while you're getting to the top, you're not stressed out about breathing. So it's a safety for you and also for your diet buddy. These are your um, gauges, so you can be this is your depth gauge and this is your um, pressure gauge. So you'll see in the 500 level, usually they pressurize them to about 2,000. Now if you go internationally and you have depth gauges, then they'll be working in bars. And so you'll have to, um, if you learn in PSI, then you'll have to learn how to kind of um, equate that with, with bars. Um, and then when you get down to the 500 level, it's, it's in the red zone and you, you go back up. Um, in here how is much where time is that, sorry? It depends on how much you breathe. <coughs> so <laughs> if you're doing a, what they call a um, drift dive. If you're doing a drift dive, you don't have to work too much. You're with the current. You're sort of floating along on the side of the reefs. Those are awesome. You're just kind of like, oh, that's great. That's great. You maybe kick your pin every once in a while. And you end up, and the boat comes down and follows you and picks you up at the end. So those are fabulous. You could stay down forever, right? If you're doing a, you know, upstream or a wreck or some other types of things, you'll be kicking using a lot more air, and so you'll be done faster. Um, you're a little bit smaller, you'll use your air a lot less than some of these big guys out here who will be like, you know, take, sucking down the air. Also, you learn, you know, your first couple dives, you, you just use, use a lot of air. But as you get better, you understand how to conserve that and, and lengthen out your dives. It is actually a badge of honor <laughs> to like use less air. So if you go down and you're the last, you're the first one to be out of air, they're kind of like, oh, rookie. You make us come up, you know, Alberta ran out of air, so I had to go back. <laughs> so it's an interesting question, all that. When you get into dive culture, <coughs> something you're like, I only use one tank. I don't know if I use two. Um, this is your weight belt. This is kind of old school. Um, what we usually use now is uh, weight pockets. So you put your weight in here and put it inside your... Why do you need weight pockets? Yes. So you can see. So you can see. Why wouldn't you see? Without using too much movement so you waste oxygen. Yeah, you're actually, especially if you're wearing a wetsuit, you're buoyant. So people are naturally buoyant and then you put a whole bunch of neoprene on you and you'll just buoy right up to the surface. And so these help you to, um, to regulate that weight. So, you know, depending on how much you weigh, your body mass, other things like that, you'll figure out, and <coughs> salt water or fresh water, because you're more buoyant in salt water than you are in fresh water, then you can do, you know, calculations to figure out how much weight you should be using for that dive. Um, and so that you can be, what's our goal is scuba diving? What kind of buoyancy, positive, negative? <coughs> Neutral. <coughs> Neutral buoyancy is your best. You want to be at the level that you stop at, you want to remain there and not necessarily have a lot of drift up and down. So again, this this uh, learning how to control not only you know side to side and things, but how you're you're moving up and down. Um, we have snorkels. You can use them much you can if you want, uh, and a mask. So the masks obviously cover up your face and your nose so that you can pressurize your mask. It should fit like this. <laughs> 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 um, why do you need to 
have your nose in there while you do pressurizing your mask. It's a constant reminder that you shouldn't be breathing through it. That's true. That's very <laughs> helpful because you don't want to forget that my nose is out. Mm -hmm. And help equalize. Help equalize. This is an airspace. So what happens when you go under pressure with an airspace? Your head starts smaller. Huh? Your head's crushing. Yeah, it squeezes <laughs> the mask squeeze, and it can you know smash that mask right up against your face. So you want your nose in there so you can add more air into that airspace, and so it relieves that pressure and um, and feels better on your face. Um, so before you try and rip off your mask, you want to breathe some air into it and then and then take your mask off or other things. Um, if you get mask squeeze and try and pull it off your face without equalizing it, what will happen? Your eyeballs will pop out. Your eyeballs will pop out. <laughs> 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 or at least you'll have the telltale first blood vessels in there and everybody will laugh at you and say, rookie again. So. <laughs> um, what's the thing that I'm missing? What am I missing here besides a wetsuit? Fins. Fins. Thank you. So I didn't bring my fins today, but fins are also, um, wow. I, I can't even tell you that um, the technology spread on fins. So it's really difficult to make a decision on what type of fin you want. Does it have like adjustable uh, tension or velocity? These uh, split <coughs> fins or straight fins or long fins or short fins or wide fins. And all of them have different characteristics within the water. So again, if you want to geek out on this type of stuff, scuba is a great sport to geek out on. So. People can have endless conversations on the technology of fins that they chose for what. They'll have three or four different pair for whatever kind of diving that they're doing, and et cetera. So um, it's kind of fun. If that's the type of thing that you like, then you'll definitely find a nice group there to, to talk and work with you on. Um, so that's a little bit of the equipment. So for open water, you definitely become familiar with your equipment and um, uh, become proficient in setting it up yourself, using it feeling comfortable with it. Um, now in Boston. You done with me? Yeah, you can sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Dry suit. It's a dry suit. So a dry suit is exactly what it's called. It's a dry suit. So what's different? What's what happens with a wetsuit? What's the tech what's the philosophy or the principle behind a wetsuit? Why do you wear a wetsuit? What? In a wetsuit? In a dry suit, there's no water inside. <coughs> so what happens with a wetsuit? Why does it let water in? What are you doing with a wetsuit? Why would you wear one? Keeps temperature consistent. Tries to keep your temperature in, right? But it uses a layer of water between you and the neoprene, and you heat up that water. So it's supposed to be sufficiently tight that you know water comes in, but it doesn't circulate, right? You don't want water be coming down your neck and out your leg and that cold water consistently circulating through your wetsuit. You want to tighten up that whatever water seeps in kind of stays next to you. Um, a lot of people say to pee in your wetsuit. I wouldn't do it, but it is a quick way. If you're really cold, you can heat yourself up. So um, if you're renting it, please don't. That's really gross. Um, but the wetsuits are on that basis. A dry suit is um, uses air, right? So all of these are seals. These are supposed to keep air out. I mean, water out. You should not have water in your dry suit. That defeats the entire purpose. So underneath the dry suit, you wear like sweats, long johns, socks, things like that. Um, the boots are integral, so you just kind of put your foot into it. Um, it's not that easy to get into. I mean, the bottom part is the top part. And you slip into the back, kind of like a space suit, and then you put this thing over your head, which is a little bit terrifying. But um, <laughs> taking it off is, is worse, actually. But <laughs> these are, <coughs> what's this for? Anybody know? Sorry? Or this is actually a, connects on to my hose. So my dry suit actually hooks up to my tank, and my regulator. Why is that? If I push this button, it lets the air into my dry suit. So again, it's an airspace, right? When I go down 10 feet, 20 feet, what's gonna happen to my dry suit? I'm gonna feel like I'm stuck in a, I'm being uh, freeze wrapped, right? Like cellophane. <laughs> so I have to add a little bit of water to give me a little more room to breathe and make me feel like I can move again. Now, what happens when I come up? Blow it out. So I'm gonna start being 
uh, yeah, the bubble is expanding, and I'm going to shoot to the top. So there are other ways to, to let the air out. I have uh, let out my shoulder. I can let out on my front. Um, there's a couple other places. So one of the problems with the dry suit is, is that sometimes if you're inverted, again, all of the air goes to your feet, right? So then you have to figure out how to get your feet down. Uh, and orient yourself back again. So there's a couple of tricks that you have to learn when you're using a dry suit. So you could take a dry suit class and become certified in that. So when you use a dry suit, do you, I mean, you must still wear your BCD over the tank. You, you do. So fill up your BCD over your dry suit? Or? Yep, BC comes over your dry suit. All the same things, just like a wetsuit, except that it's a dry suit. Yep. So um, controlling buoyancy with a dry suit is one of your, just the biggest challenges of using a dry suit. Um, certainly, if you're going to be diving anywhere from November through March here, um, you'll be using a dry suit. Um, but one of the things that's pretty fun about that is you can go into, it opens up a whole new range of um, terrains and environments that you can go into with the, with the dry suit. Um, so one of my dreams is to go to the Antarctic and do ice diving. No, not necessarily there, maybe just Alaska, but ice diving would be an awesome dive to do. So if any of you want to go, just let me know. We'll plan a trip. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, do great. you have a weight with a dry suit? You, you do. So you'll have your weight pockets appropriately sized for that as well. Um, I actually put ankle weights on my, on my boots as well. It kind of seals off and helps to have a little bit more to work with when you're swinging your, your body around. But yeah. Um, great. Well, let's see. Do any of you have any questions right now on scuba diving? Mm -hmm. How standardized is the curriculum? Like, if we get certified here in any country, or is there the list of countries that accept it, and then these countries have their own thing? And yeah, luckily, it's pretty standardized. Um, you know, PADI is a, is PADI, NAWI, SSI, SST, that group, um, they all are pretty much widely accepted and reciprocal. So if you're SSI certified and you go to PADI, that's fine. If you're PADI certified and you go to a NAWI, that's fine, they'll take it. Um, if you're doing advanced coursework, then you'll have to kind of mix and match and make sure that those are, um, the curriculums kind of overlap in what you want. But yeah, nowadays people are, you know, pulling classes from, from everywhere and, and putting them together. If you're actually gonna be employed uh, by a a uh, dive shop, you may have to recertify under their uh, group, but yeah. I have a question about the um, mask. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a concern for me because I have a mustache. And yeah. Maybe not, like, there's not that bond right here. Yep. Have you scuba dived with anybody then? Yep, I have. Actually, I taught a guy who had a mustache, and there's some mustache wax that you can use and put it over. Um, if you need to, sometimes it's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't make any Serious difference at all. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um, unfortunately, you know, Daniel's been scuba diving a couple times, but um, he has really small tubes in his ears. The eustachian tubes are the ones that connect the sinuses and help you to pressurize your ears. And so every time we go scuba diving, he gets these incredible earaches. And so there are other things you may find out that, you know, you just don't, you and diving don't get along. But, you know, at least you could shave your mustache. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's the wax. How much is like a uh, startup kit, the whole deal? Yeah, um, if you want to try it out, you should definitely rent um, for a while. And so renting is not that expensive, um, especially tanks. Um, tanks is a very out there purchase. Um, your initial things that you would probably want to have are mask and snorkel. Those, if you think you're going to be snorkeling or scuba diving at all, mask and snorkel is a great investment. You can't really go wrong with that. Um, and fins. Mass snorkel fins. If you find that you really like it and you want to keep going with it, then a BC and a regulator would be your, your next thing. Um, How much? Hmm? How mask much? So a mask and a snorkel and fins would probably run you, if you get good ones, 100 to $200. Um, a BC is, again, another 250 uh, A regulator, gosh, I want to put some more regulator, maybe, again, another $200. Um, but they have also... You don't really want to go on Craigslist to get this stuff. <laughs> um, if you do, that's okay. Take it into a shop, have it, you know, checked out. Um, you should have your stuff uh, looked at every couple of years. Um, 
uh, to make sure that it's running smoothly. They can definitely take especially the regulators and make sure that the first stage and the second stage are working properly. You just don't want to have that stuff malfunction on you when you're when you're underwater. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, keep things separate between salt water and fresh water or do you share the same? I share the same stuff. So you should rinse it between uh, between those anyway. There's a whole care regimen that should go along with your equipment. But yeah, I'll use this in the pool, which is chlorinated. I'll use it in the freshwater and in the ocean. Yeah. So you don't need to have separate separate gear for that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we kind of? Okay. Do you have to worry about wildlife that might be through or hurt you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> But that's what you wanted to hear, wasn't it? <laughs> you want to worry about wildlife. Um, let's see if that worked. So tell you about some of the wildlife that I've seen. There's, um, I've seen turtles. I've gone with turtles. Um, I've seen all sorts of, of reef fish. Um, we've seen sharks. We've seen rays. Um, we've been wreck diving. There's so many things that you can do with, with scuba diving. There's so much that you will see. Here in Boston, you can get, you can get lobsters, you can get scallops, you can actually you know, get your own seafood and bring it home and eat it. So that's, that's kind of fun as well. Is there a question? Have you ever scuba dived with dogs? Like those two dogs? I'm not a dog lover, so no. I wouldn't pay to take them scuba diving even if I had one. <laughs> no, dogs and cats, I don't see the point. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they do that. What's the certification class that the dog needed? You know what? <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to regulate that. You want to throw a dog in the pool, it's whatever. The PETA will come after you, I guess. <laughs> Animal cruelty. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is put together classes. So there are a couple of opportunities here in Boston. One of them is that they have a... Um, Discover scuba class. So if you don't know, if you kind of want to see how, what you think of scuba diving, you can actually go to the MIT pools. You can spend like, I don't know, 30, 50 bucks or something, and you can scuba dive for a day. So they'll give you a quick lesson in the morning. Um, they'll give you all the gear. You can jump in the pool. You can swim around, see if you can clear your ears, see if the mask fits all right, see if you get claustrophobic, how, how much you think, fun it, you think it will really be. And then, um, and then you can dice, decide to go on from there. If you know this is something that you want to do, then we just set up a class. And then in the class, we'll have you know, maybe six, um, we can do three to six sessions, depending on how much material we want to cover. Um, and this can, we can set it up to be any weeknight or time during uh, the day here at Vecna. Obviously, you don't get a goal mine task for it. And then we go over to the MIT pool um, like three or four times, and we practice skills there. So the skills that you'll be learning there are, you, know, you have a regulator in your mouth, you take it out, you put it back in, you don't freak out, right? You take your mask off, you put it back on, you clear the water out of it, you don't freak out. Um, you know how to inflate and deflate your BC and not get them mixed up and accidentally inflate and shoot to the top, right? So some of these things you just cover when you're in a controlled environment in the pool. And then you have four checkout dives that are in you know, an open water area that we can, we can choose as well. Um, so that would probably start you know, in a couple we could start it as soon as we want for some of these other things. Um, as far as doing our open water dive, we'd probably want to wait a little bit, unless you all want to take a trip south, and we'll, we'll do our checkout dives there. Um, it's a little cold to be putting people in the ocean for the first time <laughs> now. Um, there's a lot of trips that we can do, so if people are uh, already certified, um, they're not actually that far away, so we could do some during the summer that are here uh, in the area. Um, there's a lot of wrecks out in the harbor, actually. So um, Boston has been a harbor for a long time. A lot of ships have gone down there. So we could see some of those. There's also some of the trips um, to the St. Lawrence River, which is also a freshwater, um, very nice, clear, with also a lot of wrecks um, from over the years, you know, 1800s all the way till, till recently. We can go down to Florida, you can uh, scuba dive with manatee, um, we can go to Penny Camp in the Keys, um, lots of different areas that you can do in, without like a whole lot of, um, uh, without going to another country or something. Um, so, I guess if there is interest, um, I can start putting these things together. How many people would be interested in a uh, Discover Scuba type of class? 
Okay, great. So um, why don't I just put out a piece of paper and you can sign up and I can put together a class and that could happen you know, over the next mm, probably January and February when you guys are all back from the holidays. Um, so that would be a lot of fun. And then how many of you would be interested in an open water class? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll probably have to set up two classes. Um, we could teach between like four and eight at a time. So we'll just get those two classes going and get people certified. And then as soon as you're um, certified with the open water and we decide where we want to go for our trips, maybe we can do one that's local to do a, a, a certification trip. And then we can also do one that maybe it has a little bit more travel involved if there are people who have the, the means and motivation to, to go away and do this stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, once we're done with the open water certification, then we can just figure out as far as a group, what kind of trips that we want to do and plan together. Um, maybe have people come in and talk with us about the latest in scuba gear and technology and things. And so if you're interested in purchasing, or that you can do that with a, with a knowledge. Um, and maybe even give us some presentations on fun places to, uh, to scuba dive as well. So there's a couple of, believe it or not, scuba organizations right here in Boston. So United Divers is in Somerville. There's East Coast Divers, um, and then there's a couple of other ones that um, I've heard popping up. So there's actually a really great community for scuba diving here as well. So we can have them come in and, and talk with us and pitch to us as well. Anything else that you would want to have from a scuba club? Anything else that would be interesting to you? Find some buried treasure. Buried treasure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I'll, okay. <laughs> treasure chests. So I'll go out ahead of time, and then I'll come back <laughs> and tell you. Um, part of it actually um, in some advanced uh, courses are um, underwater navigation. So that's actually a lot of fun when you, uh, oh sorry. If you, um, part of the rescue diving is, you know, having, uh, finding a location and then also searching within that location. So that's actually really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to follow up on that, I mean, what are the rules? Like you were saying that you know, there's wreckages or if you're swimming, let's say somebody missed that gold coin sitting there. I, what's that called? <laughs> it's like rules? salvage rights or something that, yeah, you and your keepers. <laughs> Not only that, I mean, the wrecks from 1800 probably picked over, but a lot of people go scuba diving and stuff just falls. So you never know what you're going to find. <laughs> People are on boats and stuff just falls. So there could be some interesting stuff in the water. So how deep have you been? I have been 100 and, let's see, 120, past 120 so that, feet. So that's 40 plus meters. And some of the places that you'll go, you really have to watch your depth gauge. Um, because you were talking about the bends. There are some risks to scuba diving, but we'll teach you how to avoid those. Um, in some of these really clear areas, you cannot tell how deep you're going. So you'll be down 40, 60 meters, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I'm at 60 meters. I gotta get back up. 60 meters is six times, you're 180 feet. And so when you go down to 180 feet, obviously you have issues of, um, you're using more water because again you have or air, so you have a compressed space. So you, to, in order to fill your lungs, you have to use more air. So you have to be careful not to run out of air. And then you also have to gauge your time that you've been down there because the concentration of nitrogen in your blood is going to increase. And if the concentration of nitrogen in your blood increases and you come up too fast without letting it off gas, then you will get the bends. So you have to be very careful about what level you're at, how long you've been there, so that you can manage your ascent and not get sick, not get hurt. So um, that's the stuff. Also, some other things, funny things happen at deep dives. Um, something called um, nitrogen narcosis. And it's when you start feeling giddy and just happy and your judgment goes. <laughs> so yeah, you can't, you have to be careful. It's a very it has a narcotic effect. Um, and I've actually had it, and it makes you feel really, really weird. Um, and at the time, you don't realize that you're kind of dangerous, and then you get out, you come up a little bit, and then you're like, whoa, that was, that was not fun. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. So again, being able to uh, suspect and, and uh, work around those issues is why you should take my classes. What do you do for lights? You take lights with you. You can have it on your head, or you can carry it, or other things, yeah. So night dives as well, one of the reasons why night dives are so exciting is everything around you is dark. 
dark, dark. And so your beam of light is what you're focusing on. Yeah. And so whatever passes across your beam of light or what you're seeing, sometimes actually you do have light depending on how deep you go and what kind of a night it is. If you have a full moon, you could have shadows and things, but the color really just pops out to you when you shine your light on it, and then everything else is, is very subdued. So it's, a, it's very exhilarating to do night dives as well. Um, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What's the cost for these classes? Oh yeah, the cost for the class, so an open water certification is $350. And that includes all rentals on it, so you don't have to worry about equipment on that. So, um, and it includes, yeah, for the practice and also the materials and also for the open water dives. So we'll probably be doing shore dives for these. So shore dives are really good to learn on. Um, you go in from the beach and you come out from the beach. Um, so boat dives are a lot easier. So if you go on vacation, you'll probably do more boat diving. But if you've done shore diving, you'll be able to do boat diving. And that, with that, you know, you're certified to uh, you get your open water certification. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so when you get your open water certification, you should use it within a year. And if you don't use it within a year, you just do a refresher course. Um, so you, you should keep using it at least once a year. Did you have another question? Yeah. Um, like during night dives, if you're upside down, can you tell? Like yeah. Going? Yeah, because you still have a gravity vector. And okay. so when you go upside down, you'll feel it in your head mostly. Okay. Yeah. And, and your sinuses a lot. You feel kind of if you're up or down. Yeah. But not as much, obviously. I mean, it's, it is this free floating feeling, which is pretty awesome. <coughs> how do you clear water from your mask when you're underwater? Yeah, you'll learn how to do that. So you actually, um, so this flange around your mask is your seal. And so you want to buy one that fits your face, since everybody has different face sizes and types and things. So they have really narrow ones or large ones. So when you put it over your face, one of the tests to see if this is a good mask for you is exactly what I did. If you can kind of pop it on your face and it will stick and not fall off, then it's a good size for you. Um, and so when water gets into your mask, it might, if your hair is in it or a mustache or something, it might dribble in or leak in or something like that. And so you just look up, press at the top of your mask, pull out the bottom and blow with your nose. And the water, the air bubbles of course go up and the water gets pushed out. And so then you just blow into your mask and then pop it back against your face and it will be clear. Yep. So it's actually pretty simple. It's kind of a, uh, a skill that we'll work on. Um, people have surprising uh, reactions sometimes to taking their, their mask off, especially in cold water. So here's your, you know, your face, it's protected, you can see you're underwater kind of in this new environment, and then all of a sudden it's like they take your mask off. And as soon as that cold water floods in across your nose and into your breathing passages, it's, it's shocking. And I've seen people really freak out about that and you know try to claw up to the top or something. Just remember that you have your, your scuba in your mouth. You can still breathe. Just close your eyes, close your nose if you need to, and just relax and breathe for a little bit. And then you just put your mask back on and you clear it out. Everything's fine. But a lot of this is just um, remembering that you can breathe. <laughs> just do nothing. Remember you can breathe and just do nothing. <laughs> Calm. And then you think about what your next action will be. Any other questions? Sweet. <coughs> in open waters, did you ever come across a dangerous encounter with maybe animals? <laughs> People are more dangerous than animals, <laughs> though, you know? Um, <laughs> the animals actually are, are great. I've had great experiences. I've had a seal, uh, turtles, and they, you know, a lot of times they'll just come right up to you. So the animals are pretty, are pretty good. It's the, it's the people who are like idiots or, you know, <laughs> just being stupid or something that you really have to watch out for. So um, I really like the animals. Awesome. Yeah. And when you go to a place, you should do a little bit of investigation about what you will see. So if there are lionfish or you know other things that you shouldn't touch, and generally don't touch things, you know, just watch. <laughs> um, but you know, if you know what's going on in that area, then you know what to kind of keep away from. And if you're with a, a reputable place, and the dive master will be able to yeah, tell you some yeah. of those things too. And it's, it is nice to have a little preview of what the names are and things you should be looking for so that when you get down there, you kind of are scoping out and doing little treasure hunts and things like that. Yeah. 
So you're like, okay, I want, you know, you can see seahorses here or, you know, and sometimes, you know, there, the animals there are residents. And so there'll be, there's a shark that lives there or eels that hang out in this area or octopus could be under these rocks or something like that. And so you can kind of get a good feel for somebody who's been around there for a while. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else? It is like Nemo, you know, they got their little anemones that they like to hang out with and <laughs> little school systems that they have. <laughs> Great. Um, Alberto, can I borrow a piece of that paper? Sure. And I will just put out a piece of paper here. If you want to sign up for the um, Discover Scuba, and if you also want to sign up for the um, uh, Scuba class. So the Discover Scuba, we can have go really fast. And the um, scuba class will organize and make sure that uh, we can do the classes at a, at a good time. Can I have another piece of paper there? Oh, yeah. Sure. Great. Well, I look forward to scuba diving with all of you guys and sharing this wonderful adventure. It really is an amazing opportunity. <laughs>